Sorry. Today's experiment, we will determine the amount of water and hydrate. The hydrate you have seen it in uh, by the end of chapter two, where you have the salt and you have water molecules, a certain number of water molecules surrounding the cation, okay? Plus the uh, anion that you have. So there is a certain number of water molecules with the salt. And this is called the hydrate. Today we will be giving you a salt, which is barium chloride, with X H2O. You don't know how much X. You need to determine this. Now, the way we determine X, we will explain it later in the post-lab discussion. But there will be some experimental data that you have to collect. Okay? Now, to determine X, X is the number of mole of the anhydrous. Anhydrous, this is the salt alone, without water, which is in this case, barium chloride. So you need to know the number of mole of barium chloride. Also, you need to know the number of mole of water, because X is equal to number of mole of water divided by number of mole of barium chloride. Now what I have to do, I have the hydrate. If I know the mass before heating, and I heat it, and then I take the mass after heating, I can know the mass of water, because water evaporated. The difference is going to give me the mass of water. Now also I can calculate the mass of the anhydrous, because my anhydrous after heating, it will be in this crucible. So if also I know the mass of empty crucible, I can subtract and get the mass of the anhydrous. So for that, things you need to do, the very first thing you need to weigh the crucible empty. Now crucible is made out of porcelain. This material, it's porous, it has pores. Now water from air, water vapor, can come and get and sit inside. Now this water might give some error so we to my experiment. So I need to get rid of it before I weigh the empty crystal. And for that, the best way to do is to heat it up a little bit. Now you set up your burner, my crystal. Here, I will have the desiccator. Desiccator, it has this blue dry right. These rocks, they absorb the water from atmosphere, from air. So the air inside this desiccator, it's dry. There's no water here. So when I heat this one and I wait for it to cool down, I won't put it outside because if I put it outside, it will absorb water again. So I will put it in the desiccator. So I will just hold tight the copper and I will start to heat it. You will notice that the color will slightly start to become yellowish, something like that. At this point, you can say that's enough. So I let. So you will heat also the crucible. If you look closely at the color of the porcelain, you will see that it starts to lose its white uh, brightness and it will become yellowish, which means that it's getting hot. And getting hot means that dri driving out the water inside the holes. And this is what we would like to do. Now you turn off this. Meanwhile, we'll give it some time for the crucible to cool down. We will set up our experimental setup. So it's very simple. You will take your triangle clay with the O-ring. You will set it somewhere like five to 10 centimeters height. Okay, the 
and centered centered to the burner, okay? Now it's okay if it's a little bit hot, since you will not handle it. You can just take it, put it on the tile, and carefully take it to the balance. Now make sure your balance is set to zero. And you will put your crucible and let. And you will take the weight. So now when you see the gram sign, just record the first number, it doesn't matter. Now once you take the weight of the crucible and lead, you put the lead aside. Actually, you can put it out here. Then what you have to take, you have to take around two, two grams, okay? Mm -hmm. So the reason I will leave the lead inside because I need to know how much I have taken so far. So it's the crystal and lead is around 42.75 or 76. So if I have to take two grams, that's going to be 44.76, right? Roughly, it doesn't matter, as long as you record the exact mass. So I will put the hydrate, that's 45. Fine. So as long as you measure a little bit more than two, it's fine. Two or a little bit more than two, it's fine. Here I have around 2.3. As long as you record this number, you're good. If you noticed when I added my solid, I did not hit tear. You never hit tear. The tear, you only put it at the beginning. Now what I have, by subtracting the mass of empty crucible from the mass of crucible and salt, I can get the mass of the hydrate before heating. Now I will take my crucible with the solid. I will put my crucible on the triangle plate. I will cover it and <coughs> we'll start my fire. Now if you keep looking at the bottom of the crucible, the bottom of the crucible should get red. Once it gets red, after that you need to wait 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, now the 20 minutes is done, you turn off your your heat, your burner, it's very hot. You don't want to touch anything with your bare hands. So don't forget you have to use the tongue. You first put your lead on the tile. You take carefully your crucible. You put it in the desiccator. You don't cover it. You put also the lead in the desiccator, but you don't cover it. and you will wait around five minutes till it cools down. Okay, so now that the five minutes is done, you'll take your crucible out. Always be careful in case it's still hot. You put it on the tile, and you have to get the weight of the crucible sold and let after heating. So you put your crucible. Don't forget to put the lead because you have the mass of empty crucible and lead. And you record the weight. You will notice that the amount, the weight will decrease. Why? Because the amount of water inside the hydrate evaporated. So you record this number. 
Using these data, you will be able to calculate X, as you will see in the post-lab discussion. So the hydrate, you have barium chloride X, which you need to determine H2O. H2O. Now, you are supposed to fill this table. You need to find the formula of the anhydrous, which is barium chloride. From the periodic table, you can find the formula mass of barium chloride. The formula mass of water is 18.0 gram per mole. You're not supposed to forget the unit class. Now, mass of crucible and lead, everyone has different values. So I will say this is going to be A. Mass of crucible lead and hydrate before heating is going to be B. Now, mass of hydrate, how do you get the mass of hydrate? B minus A. Minus A. It's going to be B minus A. Minus A. Minus Now, mass of crucible cover and sample after heating is going to be C. And the mass of anhydrous salt would be C minus A. Minus A. Now that you have the mass of, so basically you have mass of BaCl2. We said it's equal to C minus A. You can calculate the number of mole of BaCl2, which is equal to the mass of BaCl2 divided by the molar mass or the formula mass of BaCl2. As well, you can calculate the mass of water which is equal to B minus C, the mass of crucible lead and hydrate minus the mass of crucible lead and anhydrous. Once you have the mass of water, you can calculate the number of mole of water, which is equal to mass of water divided by the molar mass of water, which is the 18. X is equal to number of mole of water divided by number of mole of the anhydrous. This way you can find the value of x.